In this video we're going to have a look at mutable lists and how they store immutable types. The previous video in the playlist looked at lists and talked about how they are mutable. Now, I'm just going to quickly cover that again here. On this line you can see we create a list and this list is going to have elements set to 2, 3 and 5 and on this line we're going to print the list and also the unique ID of the list and you can see that what we get is as shown here we get the list having 2, 3 and 5 and this is the ID of the list these three program statements change the elements of the list to 11, 13 and 17 and this line will print out the list and the ID of the list so what you will see at the runtime is as shown here and you can see that the list is now 11, 13 and 17 replacing what it was before which was 2, 3 and 5 so you can see we can alter the list meaning it is mutable and we can confirm it's mutable by looking here at the ID of the list and you can see that this ID is the same as this one confirming that the list is the same list we've just changed the elements of the list consequently we can conclude by saying that a list is mutable this line of code creates an instance of the list class in other words an object and I can show that object as shown here you can see we have an object and it has this name and of course it's got this name because we've taken it from here in the program now within this object we're going to have three elements and I'm showing those three elements here now in the last video I showed this 2 appearing here the 3 appearing here and the 5 appearing in this position now that's okay as a an approximation as to what goes on but in fact this 2 here is an example of an integer and of course if we've got an integer it means we've got an integer object and I'm going to show that integer object here I'm going to show the integer object that has the value of 3 here and the integer which I'm showing here as 5 is going to be an integer object with the value of 5 which you can see I'm showing here now what the list actually has stored within the elements is the reference to these objects so if I look at this particular element here what we will see is an arrow appear now that arrow is pointing to the integer object that has the value of 2 so we can say that they are bound together if I have a look at this particular element it'll have an arrow which I'm using to represent the fact that this is the reference to the integer that contains the value of 3 so they are bound together and this particular element of the list well it's going to have a reference which I'm showing with this arrow and that means that this is going to be bound to this object as you can see let's now consider the following program statement and we can see that this is attempting to change the first element of the list from the current value which is 2 to 11 now it will change it but what we have to do is to say well how does it change the value from 2 to 11 now over here we can see we have the integer that contains the value of 2 and we have this binding here and of course this is the reference to the object that contains the value of 2 the integer object that contains the value of 2 the thing is an integer object is immutable meaning it cannot have its value changed so this 11 cannot come here and override this 2 what will occur is another integer object will be created and this integer object is shown here will have the value of 11 keep your eye on this particular element here we can see it currently contains the red arrow which is implying that it is bound to the integer object that has the value of 2 but of course we've now got another object being created that contains the value of 11 
and what will appear within this particular element is the following reference where this reference will now be bound to the integer that has the value of 11. Consequently, we can say that the integer object that has the value of 2 is no longer bound to this particular element. So I'm going to show that one being removed. But what we can put in place is this binding here. Let's now consider this program statement. And we can see that we're going to be assigning to the second element the value of 13 replacing the three that was there when we created the list. Of course, this three is immutable. We cannot replace this three with the 13. So what Python will do, it'll create another instance of the integer class, as shown here, and this instance will store the value of 13. If we keep our eye on this particular element, we can see that there is a green arrow there that is saying that this particular element is bound to the integer object that has the value of 3. But what we will have happening is this green arrow will be overridden by a different reference as you can see by this orange arrow. Consequently, the 3 is no longer bound to this particular list element and it will be removed and you can see that the new binding is here showing that this element is bound to this one here. Now the 5, well I'm not going to show what happens if we decide to replace the third element with a different value which I did show in the previous video. But we can see that when we're dealing with lists what we have stored in the elements are in fact when they are storing integers is references to those integers. So although the list is mutable we can see here that in fact the individual values stored in those elements when they are immutable result in different objects being referenced. Let's now see if this diagram is a good approximation to what in fact goes on within Python. Let's have a look at this computer program here and we can see that this particular line creates an object that's a list object, an instance of the list class and we're going to have the elements 2, 3 and 5 in that list. And this line, well it's going to print the list and it's going to print the ID of the list. So when we look at the runtime, we can see we will get this out, showing us indeed that the list is 2, 3 and 5, and that the ID of the list is this particular value here. Now if we have a look at this line, what this is going to do, it's going to print this element here. Now this element we know is this one, the value of 2. And what I'm doing here, I'm going to print the ID of that particular element. So when we look at the runtime, we can see we get 2, which is correct, that's what's in the first element, and here we've got this ID. Now this ID you can see is different to this one, and that's because this is the ID of the integer object, the integer object that has the value of 2, whereas this is the ID of the overall list. If I now come on to this particular line, and you can see I'm assigning 11 to here, which means I'm trying to overwrite this 2 with the 11. And then when I come onto this line, I'm going to print the list and the ID of the list. And you can see here that this is the list. And indeed, you can see this is now 11, whereas previously it was 2. And if you come to look at the ID of the list, which is this one, you can see it's the same as this ID, showing us that we're dealing with the same list object. However, have a look at this line, which is going to print the content of the first element and the ID of this particular element. So if we now look at the runtime, we get this. And you can see that we have 11, which is correct, because that's what we have here. 
and we have this ID. Now this ID is different to these two because these two were in fact the ID of the list. But also this is different to this ID. Now that tells us that we have a new object in the first element position. This is the ID of the integer object that had the value of 2 and this is the ID of the integer object that had the value of 11. So we can see that the element positions when they are altered result in a binding to a different integer object but the overall list is still the same object. Of course what we've been looking at here is a particular arrangement for a list. We've seen a list that itself is mutable containing immutable integers but of course the elements of a list can actually be other lists Now that's something we'll come on to in later programs but what I wanted to show you here is that when you look under the bonnet or the hood of the Python programming language you're always dealing with objects so you're always dealing with references to the instances of classes check out the supporting website for these videos in addition why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video